Hi everybody, how's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing awesome. It's Monday morning here at the ranch. I am uh, talking to you now. It's about 6.15 in the morning here at school and getting ready for another week, a great week with you guys. And um, so I wanted to start off by uh, referencing something that I was talking about about a week or so ago about the seven habits of highly effective people and about habit one be proactive, which is the first one that we started talking about, okay? And be proactive means taking charge of your life, taking charge of your, your own circumstances, that you are a product of your own decisions. You're not a product of the whims of things that, are that aren't necessarily in your control. Uh, you don't control the weather. That's not in your control, but you are a product of... You, you decide how to react to the weather. That's your decision. And it occurred to me all at once this morning, something that I've been, it's kind of been on my mind for a long time, really a couple months actually, and I haven't been able to quite put my finger on it, but it just happened. It just happened this morning. And it's so simple when it's sitting right in front of me that I just wish I wouldn't have seen it immediately. Uh, you know how people have been talking about the year 2020, it's such a bad year, blah, 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 all of this stuff, right? And I've never been comfortable with that kind of talk, never. Uh, I've always thought that's silly. Uh, it's just a year. It's just a month. It's just a day. It's just the next day that we have. There's nothing powerful about a particular year. The only power that year has is if you give it power. And what, on January 1st, 2021, suddenly things are going to be different? Well, how? Why will they be different on that day? Well, Coach, because we'll, it'll be a new year and we, we can take a second look at things. Well, why can't you do that right now? The year 2020 does not have a hold on anybody. There is, that is a way of thinking that allows you to give your power away to somebody else or something else that's not in your control. The year 2020 is just the year that we're living in. Why can't today be the greatest day of your life? Why can't it be? Well, because it's 2020 and things can't happen. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Okay? Every day can be the new greatest day of your life if you want it to be. Uh, or if you just take an attitude of being proactive. And it doesn't have to be that the goal is to make every day the new greatest day of your life. That's not even the goal. The goal is just to be happy and be successful and be effective. But uh, I wanted to show you something. I'm going to show you an example of, uh, being, of being proactive and what that can lead to. So you see these books on the back shelf there um, behind me. There's some more. Uh, there have been others. I've actually, I've actually got you guys sitting on top of uh, ooh, about four of them right there. Uh, here's one of them. Great by choice. Greatness doesn't happen by accident. It happens by choice. It kind of plays into what I'm saying to you today. But uh, anyway, um, so the story goes back to. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 2009. Well, it goes back a lot farther than that, actually, but let's just pick up the story of 2009. So we had started a revolutionary way to do recess here at Cypress Woods and a program that we call the Clipboard and the List. The Clipboard and the List. So the Clipboard and the List became a very simple way for us to do recess. Real simple way. Check out my light. What do you think? Is that cool or what? Huh? Be proactive, baby. If I'm gonna have to be on, uh, if I'm gonna have to be on TV with you guys, I might as well do it upright. Check this out. Okay. So I hope you're able to see that. If you weren't, back that up and pause it so that you can see what I just showed you. So what that is is. Um, Character Education Partnership National Promising Practice Award, International Promising Practice Award. Um, a lot of big words, but let me just say it this way. It's uh, 
it's an award, um, exclusive award, special award to Cypress Woods for the way that we did recess back then in those days. And it was for the clipboard and the list. That was our program. Maybe I'll talk about that in, a, in another posting. So when we, when we, the award was given out in Washington, D.C. So I went up there to Washington, D.C. to receive the award on behalf of, uh, of the school. And sure enough, at the presentation ceremony, it was actually a convention, a Character Education Partnership Convention. Convention is where a bunch of people come and meet and talk about stuff. Uh, and, they, and in this convention, they came to meet to talk about character Character meaning, um, character can best be defined as character is what you do when no one is looking. Character is the mortar between the bricks. Character is your way of thinking. Okay? That's what your character is. Some people have outstanding character. Some people have shady character. Everybody's character is their own choosing. The Character Education Partnership basically says, hey, you kids in school, we need to have good character. Got it? All right, then. Kind of like the clipboard on the list. It was like, hey, don't get on the clipboard. You, you do something wrong, you're on the clipboard. Got it? All right, then. The list, of course, was if you do something extra special above and beyond what you're supposed to do, then you're on the list. And that's a good thing. So, you know, the old-fashioned classic... Don't do this, do that, good, bad, blah, blah, blah. It's real easy, really, when you break things down. So anyway, back to my story. So 2009, um, Character Education Partnership Convention, and here comes the gym teacher from Florida to receive this award uh, called the uh, for the clipboard and the list. Okay, so while I'm up there, there is a guest speaker at that... Uh, uh, at that convention. His name is Sean Covey. Sean Covey. And his father is Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey is the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, as well as another great book called The Eighth Habit. Um, and so Stephen and Sean, his son, and the whole Covey enterprise, it's called Franklin Covey, uh, they had decided recently at that time to get involved in schools, to take the seven habits to schools, to kids. And they wrote a book, and this is the book they wrote. It's called The Leader in Me. As you can see, it's kind of like what we call dog-eared. A dog-eared book means it's been opened many times. It's the opposite of a brand new book. You see all the wrinkles in there. That's because I use this book a lot. Um, and uh, they wrote this book, and Sean Covey was there to uh, was there to talk to the assembled multitudes of teachers about this book, and to let them know not not just teachers, but teachers, principals, assistant principals, district officials, superintendents, all the all the important people go to this convention, right? And uh, so Sean Covey was there to talk about this book, right? And to tell everybody, hey, we've taken the seven habits and we've put it into action for kids. And it's basically about turning kids into leaders, okay? And how can kids become leaders? So in reading this book, which I immediately, I bought as soon as I saw his speech, uh, they were selling the book right after the speech, just outside, I immediately got in line and bought one of those babies. And I went right back to my hotel room and started reading it. And uh, so I'm going to point something out to you now. I'm going to show you something here, like a little arrow so you can see it. Um, see the arrow pointing to the name George Meyer, page 118. Okay. Let's go to page 118 and see what Mr. Meyer is all about. Hmm. Okay, so on page 118, I'll read to you directly. It said, it says, nestled in the rolling plains of western Illinois farm country and pinned against the Mississippi River lies Adams County, Illinois. The sun rises up over the horizon each day to signal that something exciting is happening. 
Okay. Now, Adams County, Illinois happens to be where the city of Quincy is, and that happens to be where I went to college, Quincy, Illinois, Quincy College. So this immediately fired my imagination. Well, the story there began with Dr. George Meyer. Have a look at it. Whoops. Where is it? Come on. Uh, right there is where you want to start reading, where it says the story began with Dr. George Meyer. And I'll let you guys read that for a little while. If you want to read more of it, you can freeze it, okay? So what, what uh, this basically is about in this book is that Dr. George Meyer is somebody who put the seven habits of highly effective people in the form of kids, the leader in me, into the school system in Quincy, where I went to college. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So, following my own advice that I give you to be proactive, okay, what, you know, what most people could do when they read a book like this, and they say, oh, what a cool thing, that, that, uh, that cool thing happened, this is what I did. And by the way, I'm just a gym teacher, I'm nothing special. I'm not ever gonna say that to you, and I don't believe it. So the point of this story is not to say anything other than to show you something that I think will work for you. That's it. What I did was, I, uh, they talked about a school in here called Dewey Elementary School. Dewey Elementary School, right, right there, Dewey. Dewey is a K through three school in which they put in the leader in me. So I figured, okay, elementary school. Cyprus is an elementary school, so is Dewey. They must have a PE teacher at Dewey, right? We have one, they must have one. So I looked up the phone number to Dewey Elementary School in Quincy. I called the school. School phone was answered by some nice lady who every, you know, like, you know how we have the nice people in our office that answer the phone. And I said, uh, um, uh, I'm calling from Florida and uh, I would like to speak with the PE teacher. Actually, I knew the PE teacher's name because it's in this book somewhere. Um, I'm just not gonna look for it, but trust me, it is. So I knew the teacher, I knew enough to ask for the teacher by name. And they said, okay, put me on hold. And on came the PE teacher of Dewey Elementary onto the phone with me. Now, what am I doing with this phone call? Being proactive. So I started asking her about the seven habits. Do they really use them in, in, at Dewey? What do they do? What types of things do they do? Because of course I wanted to, I'm constantly searching for ways to make our program better. So the teacher told me some of the things they did, but she said pretty early in the conversation, you know, you really should talk to Dr. George Meyer. And of course, to me, Dr. George Meyer was like a person in a book, which meant he was like somebody important. Like, why would I talk to somebody who, whose name is in a book? I mean, it's, it's, I'm just a gym teacher. And she goes, no, no, you really should talk to Dr. George Meyer. He could really, he could really help you. And I said, okay, how can I get a hold of him? And uh, she, one thing led to another, we exchanged information. I ended up with Dr. George Meyer's phone number and email address. Now what? Is this where the story is going to stop? Uh, no, of course not, because uh, I'm following my own advice. So I call up Dr. George Meyer and start talking to him. Turns out he is the superintendent of schools for Adams County. And um, that means he's the leader of all the schools. And he is a believer in the seven habits. So he's a believer in the Leader in Me program. He even went and met uh, Stephen Covey the author of the book and got certified to teach the leader in me to students and to administrators and principals and all of that. So he taught everybody in his district about how to do the, the leader in me and how to do the seven habits. And they started doing it. And immediately they saw the benefits. They started, uh, you know, showing increases in all kinds of things, attendance, grades, you know, motivation, all, all kinds of things that really helped. So uh, in the course of our conversation, Dr. Dewey told me, uh, yeah, I have a relative that lives in Florida. Uh, 
and uh, oh no, this is what happened. I said to him, kind of a throwaway at the end of the at the end of the conversation. I thanked him. And I said, "Well, if you ever get down to Florida, I'd love to meet you." Something like that. And he said, "Well, as it turns out, my wife's father lives in Sebring, Florida, which is about three hours from here, uh, and uh, we're going to go there. We're going to go there in February. I don't remember what month I was talking to him, but it was a few months before that." And uh, I said, oh my gosh, do you, is there, are you going to be in the Tampa Bay area uh, at any point? He said, well, I'm not planning on it, but I could come and we could meet. And imagine what I'm thinking in my mind, imagine what you would be thinking, that you've taken the time to call up these people that appear in a book and now they're offering to drive three hours to meet you. Pretty good. So I said, oh, that would be awesome. So. I went to this, uh, I said, would you speak with all of my teachers here at Cypress Woods? Would you meet with them and explain to them about the leader in me? Because in the meantime, I was trying to talk to the teachers about that. And some of them thought it was a great idea. Some of them didn't really understand what I was talking about. And why would they? All the, the teachers are busy. The, um, you know, and they've got so much to do and their, their lists always have more things on them. And here I was talking about another thing to go on their list, which is not what they want. They want less things on their list, not more. Uh, and um, so I thought if Dr. Meyer could come up there and talk with them, with the teachers of my school, um, maybe they could see that if you adopted the seven habits, you would have less things on your list, not more. Um, so anyway, long story short, Dr. Meyer agreed to come drive up to the Tampa Bay area. So I was blown away. So I, I said, where will you stay? And he said, well, I'll just get a hotel room. And I said, I, I, don't, I can't pay for that. I'm sorry. And he goes, don't worry about it. I'll pay for it. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to let this guy pay for this hotel room. I mean, the least I could do is pay his hotel bill, right? So I went to the district, Pinellas County School District, and I explained to them who this guy was and that he was driving up just to talk to our faculty and is there any way we could pay for his hotel room and talk to enough people, twist enough arms, and finally um, a, uh, enough, uh, finally somebody said, okay, we'll do it and just send us the bill. So I got his hotel room paid. Then the coolest thing, uh, one of the parents at the school owned their family owned a limo company, a limousine company. And I called her. I called this mother and I said, hey, we've got this guy visiting, Dr. Meyer from Illinois, superintendent of schools. He's coming just to talk to our kids. He's staying in a hotel, he drove up three hours from Sebring just to talk to us. Is there any chance we could pick him up from uh, the hotel in a limousine? He's an important person, you know? And I'm thinking, what would they say? They could just say no, but Mrs. Bechtel, who's really awesome and really cool and a really great supporter of the school, she said, sure, of course, coach, we'll make that happen. So to make a long story short, um, well, you know, that's not possible, sorry. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to speed the story along, but I'm not one to make stories short, I'll try. Here comes Dr. Meyer on the appointed day, driving up, uh, or the night before actually, driving up from Sebring to Florida, or to uh, Tampa Bay area, gets a hotel room. I went over, I think I went over and met him, met up with him the night before, just to make sure he was checked in and everything was good, and he had everything he needed. And then the next morning, at the appointed hour, it was like seven in the morning, or maybe even earlier than that, uh, Mrs. Bechtel, one second. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Bechtel sent the uh, sent the limo, and and I drove myself in my car. I drove to the hotel because I wanted to ride in the limo. I thought that would be really cool. I, I had only been in one one other time, um, so I drove to the uh, hotel. I met up with Dr. Meyer, and here we go off in the limo on the way to Cypress Woods. And we show up, and then we there is a faculty meeting to meet Dr. Meyer. Now, the interesting thing was that um, they couldn't call a mandatory faculty meeting. Mandatory means uh, you have to come. 
uh, because they just couldn't do that. Teachers have, you know, work they have to do. So it was on a day when there was no meeting already in the morning, but what the, the principal did, Mr. DeVries, is he suggested that anybody that wants to learn more about the leader in me and seven habits, one of the key people, Dr. George Meyer, is going to be in our faculty meeting, you know, and he's going to give a presentation about it. And uh, so about 50 teachers came. I was really happy about that. We recorded the presentation. I have a DVD of it somewhere. I saw it recently, actually. I haven't looked at it in a long time. And Dr. Meyer gave a presentation of the uh, seven habits to our Cypress Woods school. And then I took him around and showed him all around the school, introduced him to the PE team. And then we went and sat in Mr. DeVries' office and talked for a while. And then, um, then it came time for him to go. And the limo came back to get him, to take him back to his hotel, and that was it. He was gone, and then he drove back down to Sebring. He just drove up just to talk to our faculty. But that was the, the, the product of being proactive, okay? Well then, on the way out, this is one of my favorite things. I'm gonna show it to you. Dr. Meyer gave me one of the copies of this book, um, and he wrote something in it, and this is what he wrote. If you can see it or not, it says, Jim, PE is where leaders are created. George Meyer. Boom. Be proactive. So the story is one that takes into account one of my books. Every one of these books has a story to it. Many of them are personal. Uh... <clears throat> I'll tell them to you at various points in time. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I don't expect of myself. And when I ask you to be proactive, then, that, then I'm not, you know, I'm not sitting back and just telling you to do it. I, that's what I do, and it has led me to many, many good things. Um, and I thought that you would think it was cool to see that award that I showed you up there, and to see that the work that you do, okay, the work that you do at PE is extraordinary. And it causes people like Dr. George Meyer to drive three hours just to come and talk to Cypress Woods teachers about whatever he believes in. And, um, and the work that you do causes all of these people to want to get on YouTube and interview with me so they can talk to you. You have to look at yourself as not just some little kid that 2020, I can't, don't, I can't wait for the calendar to turn. It's just like, think about that. That basically says that you are not in control of your decisions. The calendar is wrong. You're in control of your decisions. Now, things, may, things have happened in 2020 that you don't have any control over that have led us to a new way of doing school, which we're doing right now. But we can, what we do is how we do it is up to us, okay? And if we look at it in, as something that has a bad thing that's happened to us and we can't wait for a good thing to come along that's gonna happen, well, what that basically says is we have to wait for something to happen because we can't make something happen ourselves. We just have to wait for the calendar to change. We just have to wait till something happens that, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to wait for anything. You can decide today, right now, whatever it is you want to. That doesn't mean you can change things, okay? Because things, there are many, many things that are going to happen that you can't change. But what you can do is you can change how you react to them. Okay? Here's, here's a little secret. You are the world's greatest expert on your opinion, on your mindset, 
you are the world's greatest expert on that. No one else. And so, um, and so understand that. Now, habit two is called begin with the end in mind. Okay? And when we get to habit two, I'm going to tell you a story about uh, this right here, this soccer ball. That's my begin with the end in mind story. I am eager to tell it to you, and I look forward to it. But guys, I love talking to you about these things, um, and I love sharing thoughts with you, and I hope they're good for you. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you get something out of them. Have a great week. Got some awesome PE lessons this week for you. Really, I, I mean, so cool. And Pinellas County Schools redid the choice board, the famous choice board, okay? So there are new things up there, which are cool, and it's gonna be part of our planning for this week. Um, you're gonna meet my niece, Megan Hart, this week. I, uh, I was gonna introduce you to her last week, but you know, we got a little sidetracked with this storm and things got pushed back a little bit. So you're gonna meet Megan Hart this week. You're gonna love Megan Hart. I don't know if you remember her. She's the one that created the video, Math Town Road, which I showed you at PE class. Um, but if you don't remember that, you'll see it. Megan is a teacher. She's a math teacher in Chicago. She's uh, in her 20s. She's young. You'll like her. You'll, you'll love her. Everybody does. And. Uh, and she knew when she, when she was in fifth grade, she'll explain it in the interview, that's when she decided that she was going to become a teacher. I mean, she firmly decided it in fifth grade. She thought about it starting in about first grade. Um, and uh, so she pursued it, and she used sports to get there. Her story is great. You'll love it. You'll meet her uh, and the choice board and a live lesson on Friday, let's do this. I may even pop in with another one of these little recordings too. Adios amigos, love you guys.